feeding my velvet worms in this tank right now. There's one right there. I think most of them are living down in the middle of this peacock moss. Down there in that hole. And I dropped a Turkestan roach in there. And you can see that they crisscrossed it with a bunch of slime. Oh, and I can see a velvet worm moving right up against it here right now. Ooh, I can see the antennae of two of them in there. Maybe more. I think that's where there's a bunch of them living down there in the hole at the base of this peacock moss. Oh, this is exciting for me. Getting a little closer here. Maybe see them feeding on it. Oh yeah, you can see they're digging their mouths into it, moving it around. Velvet worm there is at the tail end of the roach, pulling it around. This is very exciting for me. It's like a pit of snakes down there. Of course, you can see the little beads of liquid. So I've made some changes to the velvet worm tank since I first put it together a few months ago. You can watch the video about how I set this tank up with this water layer down here on the bottom, right up here in this corner. The peacock spike moss is doing really, really well. In fact, it's sort of the, I guess, dominant feature in the tank, both in terms of just its coverage there on the ground and the hiding place for the velvet worms, as well as the thing that I enjoy most about the tank because I hardly ever see the velvet worms. Most of the velvet worms are hiding down in a cavern, and I don't know to what extent they built the cavern, but there's a hole right down there. Maybe we can get a little closer so that you can see the opening better. I dropped a roach in there recently, and you can see them actively feeding on it. They initially shot their slime into it covered it, sort of pinned it, and then they proceeded to move around on it. Well, I'm gonna drop another roach down there and we'll see what happens. I really like the way this peacock spike moss plant looks. That metallic blue foliage. I've never successfully been able to keep one of these alive and this tank is just so perfect for them. I have generally adopted this as my feeding method. A couple of Turkestan roaches, and they are pre-killed. And so I'm just going to drop it down there into that cavern, and we'll see if the velvet worms converge on it. And so it's just right down there. see that it's antennae are moving just slightly. And I generally put one out here in the open as well for them when they wander out, usually at night, to find. And so we'll just wait and see what happens. All right, coming back down here into the tank, and I notice that the roach I dropped out there in the open space yesterday is no longer there. And I thought, well, maybe it just crawled under here because it was still sort of crawling a little bit. And I can see the remains of the roach right there. All the legs detached, very interesting. And under that same log here, we had a velvetite that's making 
its way away from us now, very slowly. Always neat to see evidence of them having fed. And they really decimated the roach there, I'm surprised. I don't know if it was just this one velvet worm or if it was a group of them at some point. Take a peek and see if maybe there's, oh, oh, there's two more hiding down here. Good to see them. Carefully close that back up. And then there was the roach that was down here inside the peacock spike moss. Take a peek at the status of that one. Hard to get the light just right, but it appears to not be in the same form that we dropped it in as. Kind of moldy looking, actually, at the edges. I think that it was also consumed. It doesn't appear to be whole. And so, there's a little piece of the harder exoskeleton right there. Looks very much like what we saw underneath the log over here. And let's see if I can pull anything else out there. Oh, there's another little piece of it. The little bit of moss attached. Just the exoskeleton. Oh, interesting. Appears that there is a nematode crawling off of it. And so we'd say that we have a bioactive vivarium here. Could be a fungus gnat larva. Let's take it in a little closer here. No, nope. hard to say. Probably a nematode. Looks pretty thin and wiry. Interesting how much that little organism can cause that exoskeleton piece to bounce around. Let's see if we can excavate anything more. You know, some people would be terrified about nematodes, but nature is full of so many more little microorganisms that our velvet worms would tend to have to contend with out there. I'm not the type to worry too much about things like that. And for all I know, maybe the nematodes came from the velvet worms. We just never know. So, that's what we've got here today. I'm going to pull out these other little bits here so that they don't mold and start to foul the substrate. And put this little log back in place and we'll see how these things do, hopefully. And the goal is that eventually we will see some little baby velvet worms roaming around in the tank.